we're going to talk a little bit about exporting today. Basically, once you've actually gotten a map together um, in Knitter, uh, you often want to export it so that you can view it uh, in, an, in an independent map viewer, like uh, embed it in your website or use it as a layer, whatever you want. So maybe the most common way to do this is to put it on top of a Google map. It doesn't have to be Google. It can be Yahoo Satellite. It can be Virtual Earth Roads, whatever you really want. But the idea is to view your information on top of another map. Um, so the other possibilities here are GeoTIFF, which is kind of a, a GIS or a professional format for sending uh, raster imagery around. Um, and then there's also JPEG. This map doesn't have a JPEG, but for example here, if you just want to download the map in the simplest, fastest way possible, JPEG is pretty reliable. So to show you how this works, I'm going to open up this map of Mestia, which is a city in the north of the country of Georgia. And I'm going to turn on the background dimming. So you can see the range of images we have here. Some of them, like these, were captured from about 4,000 feet, whereas others were captured from maybe a few hundred feet. So you get a range of resolutions. You need to choose a resolution that is going to be common or uh, that you're going to flatten everything down into. Um, what happens is Knitter will make a recommendation. It says it's recommending 31, a little more than 31 centimeters. It's doing that uh, by averaging all the resolutions and just choosing the middle one, um, or choosing one, one in the middle. Uh, and uh, you can see how it did, made that decision based on the histogram. If you click on Adjust or Options, you get this histogram. And what it shows is all of the images from 0 to 100 centimeters per pixel. Now, this is one of the wider ranges you'll see. This map has a huge range. So anything from all the way up here at 57 you know, centimeters per pixel all the way down to a couple images that are 5 centimeters per pixel. So what is the best compromise here? Um, it's chosen 31, but you know, if you look over here, you can see there's actually a spike down by, what will we see there? About 20 centimeters. So, I don't know, the further down you go, the more um, you're going to be stretching this data, these images, far beyond what the actual the, their actual resolution is. But the higher you go, the more you'll be losing out on some of the good resolution you have in some of the other images. So I'll choose 20 as a, as a better guess. You notice that if you go down below this red zone, it's really trying to tell you uh, that's, that's going to take forever to export and it may actually fail. So uh, 20 looks like a pretty good one. Um, I'm going to type these in, which proves that I'm a person. We've had a lot of issues with uh, spam bots coming in and trying to export maps, like automated scripts and stuff. So we try to make sure that it's only people who are doing this. And assuming that I pass the test and hit export, it will begin uh, exporting. Th this GeoTIFF is probably from an earlier uh, export that someone canceled. But um, here we go. Let's let it run. It looks like I guess it looks like I didn't um, pass the test. So I'll try one more time. That can sometimes happen. Drop this back down to. 20. It's nice to have a round number. Okay, and then let me do this more carefully. Oh, it is going. I'm sorry. So it, it, it actually did work, and I just didn't wait long enough for it to refresh. So it's warping. This is going to take forever, so what I'm going to do is go over to this next map, which has only one image. Now, obviously, you know, a single image is not that hard to decide, you know, a resolution for, since you just go with the resolution of that. It, it's a little bit odd because actually it's it's taking the resolution of one side here. Since the image is not straight down, it doesn't necessarily have consistent resolution across the entire image. But the variations are pretty minimal, and so uh, you know, by choosing just one side uh, to make the decision, the algorithm is usually pretty good. But just to take a look at this, um, I'm opening this up. Going to options, and as you can see, there's just one, there's just one image, so it's not not a big deal. Uh, this has already been exported once, but just so you can see, 5.1. Oh, sorry. Speaking and typing at the same time, um, and assuming I pass this one, there you go. So that's much faster. It warps the one of one images. Um, it composites it. It tiles it, and then in a more 
recent feature, it's creating a JPEG, and it should have also created a zip file of all of the um, of all of the, 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 the tiles. So you can actually download the this and put it up on your own server. You can view it in an open layers viewer, which is what I'll do now. Give it a second. There you go. Or you can uh, download the JPEG. That's actually because it's in um, latitude longitude projection as opposed to spherical mercator. But you can see that it is actually the full resolution image. And there you go. Uh, once you go back to the main page, you should be able to see that map show up with its new exported formats. Because it gets bumped back to the top. All right, thanks very much. Um, if you want more information or want to look at some other tutorials, I recommend you click on Info or Help. There is um, a basic tutorial and then a bunch of others being listed down here at the bottom.